So I was born in 1974. So it's really the decade of the 80s that defines my childhood. And in this video, I want to talk about my favorite science fiction books from the 80s. At the end of the video, I will tell you some of the omissions uh, from the list that I definitely want to get to. But the 80s, a fabulous decade, right? We started to go from analog to digital, tons of changes, MTV generation, challenger disaster, and the world scene, Cold War came to an end towards the end of the 1980s. Perhaps it didn't come to an end, perhaps we're back in Cold War now, but I digress. It was a fabulous time. I got my first computer in the 80s. I don't remember if it was 86, 87, Commodore 116, or was it Commodore 64? Things get blurry with time, but let's talk about my favorite books from the 80s. My top five, not going to rank them at all. Let's get right into, as a matter of fact, my favorite book of the 80s. Let's just start off with a bang. Hyperion. 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 Let's talk about Hyperion, my favorite book from the 80s. One of my favorite all-time science fiction stories in Hyperion. Dan Simmons really did something amazing. He combined so many different elements and woven them beautifully into a sci-fi odyssey. It's a story that is really beautifully told, literary, with fabulous characters that kind of pop off the page. In this frame narrative, contemporary style, we meet pilgrims. Pilgrims who are on a pilgrimage, to the time tombs on a planet Hyperion. These mysterious time tombs are moving back through time and they're guarded by Shrike. By Shrike, scary creature. I don't know if I can call Shrike a villain. Oh, you really don't call thunder when it kills a villain. Shrike is an amazing creature, but these pilgrims have stories to tell. And like I mentioned, the Canterbury style frame narrative here around our main idea is incredible. Just about every single story that each of the pilgrims gets to tell builds on the other, offers different elements, brings something new to the picture. Hyperion blew my mind. And it is only book one in Acanthus. There are four books all together in this larger story, but it's the first two books that tell this story of Hyperion, this pilgrimage. So in book one, we get a lot of backstory. We get an amazing poetic literary tale. The characters are well developed. Each one has his or her own voice. I urge everyone to read Hyperion. Not everyone is going to love the book as much as I do. That's for sure. But I think anyone who reads it will see that Dan Simon went for it with this story. Book two, The Fall of Hyperion, is incredible as well. Completely different type of book. Just kind of becomes a space opera adventure and worthy successor to book one. In any case, I could go on and on and on about Dan Simmons and Hyperion. I won't bore you anymore with that. You need to read it if you haven't. You really need to give it a shot. It's such a unique reading experience uh, with so many elements, poetry, Poetry, oh my God. Oh, in any case, Carl Sagan, Contact. Carl Sagan is one of my favorite human beings. And this book, I think it was written 1985. Yes, 1985 is where when Carl Sagan wrote this book. And I read it many years ago. I don't even, when I think of this story, I think of the movie more than the book because I've watched the movie several times with my wife, with the kids, by myself. Fabulous movie as well, but the book, the original, is amazing. I think it should be read. Carl Sagan, an atheist, in this book was able to give us first contact, but went further than just the fascination with meeting aliens. There is a lot of philosophy. There is this, this tension between religion and science approached in a very intelligent way. Famously, Carl Sagan was an atheist, spoke openly about his problems with religion, but in this book, he offers his ideas in a very approachable and sensitive manner. Interesting book, great first contact story. One of my favorite first contact stories from again, from someone who has done so much to make science 
more palpable for so many. Carl Sagan is what Neil deGrasse Tyson is to us right now. He was to folks back then. And just a super likable guy and a book that is really well written, in my opinion, and a fun story. Maybe not the best science fiction book you'll ever read, but one that you will enjoy. And if you've watched the movie but haven't read the book, do so and vice versa. If you've read the book and haven't seen the, the movie with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey, it's well worth your time to watch the movie as well. Another book from 1985 is Blood Music by Greg Bear. Completely different story than anything else on this list. A unique, interesting, fascinating, scary, some people call this sci-fi horror tale of a scientist who decides to become his own experiment in a way. In this book, we meet Virgil, who creates intelligent lymphocytes. And when his bosses find out what he's working on and fire him and tell him to destroy these intelligent microbes, well, Virgil just can't do that. He is not willing to do it, but how is he going to sneak his experiment out? The only way to do it is to ingest the, the microbes. And that's where the story starts. At first, everything goes really well. The microbes go to work inside him, fixing him, making his eyesight better, for example. But then, uh, then things take a turn. And this story really becomes, at some points, to me anyway, incomprehensible. It is a fascinating tale, though. It is a story that I had no clue how it was going to end, where it was going. Fast paced, pretty easy read. Originally, I think Greg Bear, if I remember correctly, wrote this as a short story and then expanded it into a full length novel. If you haven't read Blood Music, I recommend you pick it up. Don't make this your first science fiction book you've ever read. Uh, you may not enjoy it, but if you've read enough, I think this is one that is, that is offering something original, a unique look uh, at the science of, of microbes, nanotechnology, I don't know, but it's a fun story for sure. 1985 was a good year for science fiction as Orson Scott Card published Ender's Game. Orson Scott Card honestly is not my favorite human being and that's an understatement. He has made some troubling statements, but I think we can separate art from the artist. I definitely can. And if you read Ender's Game, I think you'll be happy that you did. It's an Nebula Hugo Award winning book. It's a book that influenced a lot of future science fiction. Uh, and it's a fast paced, fun, interesting story at its heart. And it's got broad appeal because this could be read by young adults as well as adults, adults. Uh, it's a story of Ender Wigan who enters this school for military geniuses. Uh, we are humanity is fighting a war with aliens and the higher ups realize that it's perhaps the kids who are our future if we are ever going to defeat this threat. The story really takes off from there. There's a lot of tension. There's some things that are really simplistic in the way it's presented and obvious. You know, of course, the kids don't like uh, our protagonist. He's being bullied. There's some things that I uh, found kind of uh, YA-ish, uh, but in the end, the story was satisfying. It's not my favorite uh, science fiction book of all time, as it is for many readers, the top three, top five. This book will appear quite often. Not for me, not at all, but I still enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Definitely deserving a place in my top five books of the 80s. And it is book one. There is a larger world behind this book uh, that I, maybe I'll mention at the end of this video. So yeah, Ender's Game. Let me know if you've read it. Let me know if you love it. Uh, and uh, let's move on to the last book, which was written, I believe, in 1980 or 1981. Let me just double check very quickly here. I don't want to give you the wrong information. Gunslinger, of course, uh, is 1982, actually. So Gunslinger is book one in the Dark Tower series. Some people may say this isn't science fiction. Some people will say, oh yeah, it definitely is. There's a lot of discussion online whether Dark Tower, the series, how it falls. But I think it doesn't matter. I think uh, Stephen King really broke all the rules when he wrote Dark Tower. It is a fascinating series of books with Gunslinger being book one. Not my favorite book in the series, but it's the one that starts it all. And it's the one that I'm holding in my hand for that reason. There are elements of fantasy, Western, science fiction, horror. It's all here. Stephen King really 
outdoes himself. It's Stephen King at his best writing, Dark Tower. Gunslinger is our introduction to this big, big world, uh, which at times can feel fantastical and at other times grounded in science and scientific possibilities. Fabulous story, quickly becoming one of my favorite series of all time, regardless of what genre you want to put it into. Let me know if you've read The Dark Tower. Now, a few books that are missing from this list that I want to definitely read sooner rather than later. Neuromancer has been collecting dust on my shelves for a long time. I've been putting this off. I need to get to it at some point. Neuromancer by Gibson, of course, ushered in cyberpunk, a subgenre of science fiction. Not my favorite subgenre, I have to say. Can be difficult for me to understand what's going on uh, at times when I'm reading cyberpunk book or the elements of cyberpunk. However, it's definitely the defining science fiction book of the 80s. I think most people would point to this as the most important book, science fiction book that comes out of the decade of the 80s. So I do need to get to it at some point uh, for sure. Robert Silverberg, Lord Valentine's Castle. I read Silverberg's A Time of Changes, so I definitely want to read this at some point as well. Let me know if you've read this story, which also has elements of fantasy in it, uh, merged with science fiction. And Book of the New Sun, Gene Wolfe, Shadow of the Torture, book one. This is probably, uh, out of all the books that are on my list of shame, this would be the first one I think I would pick up. It's one that it's calling out to me a little bit. Let me know your thoughts on this series. And there are four books here. Uh, so anyway, the 80s, the 80s were a good decade for science fiction. Let me know your favorite book of the 80s and uh, let me know what I should read if there's a book that I haven't talked about uh, that you've read from the decade of the 80s and love. So uh, I would be curious to hear about that, especially give a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll talk to you in the next video. See you then.